What are we starting with this week? A, a wee YouTube review. Comment. We did YouTube comment last week. No, we did. We did Patreon last week. Damn it. Um, I said before we started recording that we're doing a YouTube comment. I'm like, oh, really? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I was paying attention to that. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> Corey so, was like, oh, whoopsies. I can't find the YouTube comment. And I was like, that's in my brain now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are starting with a YouTube comment. The YouTube comment of the month. And it's quite a good one. Quite a long Ooh. one to strap in. <clears throat> it's quite a prestigious title. YouTube it's, comment of the month. Yeah, of the month, right? Damn. But this is from Katrine. And it says... I mean, space is a bit gay. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that is the comment of the month. That one really made me chuckle. That was on our Gays in Space Dr. Sally Ride episode, which you should definitely <laughs> check out. We go we go into the depths of sending a gay to space. Uh, shall we start the show? Yes. Yes, let's stop the show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutfirth. Hello. Hello there. This week, we've got a woolly big story. <laughs> woolly uh, mammoths. mammoths. We're talking about mammoths. Yeah, we're talking about mammoths. Yes. <laughs> Not that on the spot, by the way. Like, <laughs> like, nothing written down on this on this sheet of paper. I just came up with that off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking oh. about mammoth this week. Have you guys heard about um uh, about mammoths? Yes. Yeah. The, the woolly ones. Yes. Yeah. The woolly ones. Were they non-woolly ones? I well, they're in mammoths that weren't called woolly mammoths. Um, but I, I think they were still a little bit woolly. Just pictured how you can get like a like a hairless cat. But in mammoth, uh, form, it's like, a, like a sphinx mammoth. Weird, <laughs> gigantic. That's an ball elephant. Bag You're talking about an elephant. Tusk. I am talking about an elephant. Yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> the the uh, mammoths were in the news um, a couple of weeks ago. Do you guys know why that was? Have they successfully back together? One? No. <laughs> there's a mammoth reunion happening. They're going on a world tour. I feel like you guys have said basically the same thing in slightly different ways. Both entirely <laughs> wrong, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so ma- mammoths were in the news because we we've um, we sequenced some of their DNA. We've got a little bit of mammoth DNA, but the cool thing is that it's actually some of the oldest DNA. In fact, the oldest DNA Ooh. we've ever sequenced. Oh, um, we'll get into why that is. We'll get into that in a little bit. But first, I want to give you guys a background on mammoth. What do you think a mammoth is? Big, big hairy elephant. Okay, right. Well, yeah, you're not wrong entirely. <laughs> so a mammoth is. Gosh, this is so frustrating that you're right. Um, it is. It's a group of extinct elephants. Um, and <laughs> hairy elephant. Yeah. yeah. Thank Infuriating. You, that low resolution description of a mammoth. <laughs> really mad. Just <laughs> look in the dictionary. That's a big woolly elephant. No, so mammoths are elephants. They're um, extinct elephants um and you can find their fossils on every single continent except for asia and south america um Ooh. did i say asia no except for australia and south america i was just thinking like, were they in australia no they yeah they, they, they were not in australia <laughs> they were in asia just not australia and south america um so there are there are some different types of mammoths there's woolly mammoths um siberian mammoths um there's a bunch of different kinds of mammoth okay mm. but what to bear in mind is that mammoths are a type of of elephant that has died. Cool. Oh, wait, no. The species has died. They've all died. An elephant does not become a mammoth after it dies. That is not <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> like a caterpillar at cocoons. Um, do you guys have any idea why we might know more about mammoths in comparison to other sort of um, extinct mammals? Bear in mind, they went extinct um, between like sort of like 10 to 15,000 years ago. Some wow. as the, some were as recently <gasps> as only about four or five thousand years ago. But can you guys figure out any reason why we might know well, a lot about mammoths? I was going to say because they're bloody everywhere, it seems. Well, they are everywhere. <laughs> but <laughs> Is it because they some of them are frozen? Yeah, bang on. That's right. Oh. Yeah. We've got some really well-preserved mammoths because they like to live in cold climates and specifically very cold places. And some of them died um, and were frozen into the permafrost. So they're very, very wow. well-preserved. Um, reserved? Preserved. Yeah. Uh, it, it's like popping your mammoth in a freezer. <laughs> and um well it's like it's you know 
It's like you you put your food in the freezer. It lasts much longer. It does. Than it lasts on the counter. Put your mammoth in the freezer. It lasts a lot longer. Yeah, last thousands of years. Thousands. Well, at least millions. Four. <laughs> no, well, no, that's a bit much. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like I said, um, mammoths kind of went extinct between sort of ten to fifteen thousand years ago. Um, and some there are some species that may have been alive as recent as like four thousand, four thousand ish years ago, mm -hmm. uh, but th those were only on sort of small islands and whatnot, um, not great populations of them. Um, and they had been around, um, so they they've been around for I think about what it says here is two point six million years ago, um, wow. potentially, yeah, which is um, mad. Mammoths have been around for, were around for a long, long time. Um, and we used to hunt them a lot as well. You know, mm. um, they were around for about half a million. Yeah, uh, actually, sorry. They were around for about half a million years. So half a million years plus kind of five, 10,000 mm -hmm. uh, that they've died. Um, yeah, so they were around for about half a million years and we used to hunt them as well. So we shared a lot of, uh, we shared a lot of time with mammoths and we know, we know a fair amount about mammoths. So we know that they've got a back hump. They have fat deposits mm -hmm. in their back hump. Um, we could not tell that from fossil records. How do you think we figured it out? Frozen one? Frozen? Not the frozen ones, no. Uh, because it had bones that were like bendy. No, no, we can't tell it, it from was... its bones. You can't tell from oh. its bones. Oh, DNA? Weird. No. No? Way simpler than that. We asked them. <laughs> <laughs> that is simpler. <laughs> <laughs> if I remind you that we shared, we used to, we used to share the planet with them. People used to be alive at the same time as man. Someone told us. <laughs> A really old person. And they're here with us today. Through cave yeah. paintings. Yeah. Bear in mind, mammoths, oh. yeah, mammoths went extinct like 10,000 years ago. Man. I'm aware of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Someone did tell us through cave paintings, yeah. Interesting. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So we... What, were they fat shaming mammoths in cave paintings? No, they're just drawing them. <laughs> not fat shaming to draw a realistic mammoth. Fat bitch Brenda. I'm going to draw it on my cave. <laughs> <laughs> she had the... Fattest hump I've ever seen. <laughs> Just <laughs> I don't know if that's really bad or really funny or both. <laughs> Moving on. Um, uh, yeah, so one thing we do know about mammoths, uh, I say one thing, one of many things we know about mammoths is they were bloody big. Um, a lot of them were about the size of ele elephants are today. Mm. About the size that elephants are today. Uh, but... The North American Imperial Mammoth oh. was four meters tall at the shoulder. Oh, what? Oh. Four meters, for anyone uh, listening, is over twice my height. It's two uh. doors. Two doors. Two uh. doors tall. Oh, God. It Taller just than this room. That what? Room. Yes. That's like the height of an upstairs window. Yeah. It's just wow. A, and we used to hunt them. Yeah, I've read before that um, mammoths were like uh, are credited with like one of the reasons why humans went into colder and colder climates because it's like getting the the really hard star in in a Mario course. It's like it's like really worth going and getting them, um, but but it's really difficult to do. So lots of people wouldn't have done it. But if you get them, there's loads of meat there, and it really pays off. And I guess you got you got the wool to keep you warm as yeah. well. Yeah, meat, fat, wool, loads of stuff, bones. Yeah, and we we used to use so much of the mammoth like. All of the mammoth, you know, we'd use their i we'd use their ivory um, for uh, I think different sort of tools and whatnot. Mm, uh, yes. A mammoth is a great kill if you're um, an early human. Nowadays, bad move. There's not not there's not enough of them to kill any, you know. Well, um, yeah. So hats if you off to you if you manage to kill one. No, if you spot one, don't bloody hats off. No, <laughs> don't re-extinct a species against see, all odds. You see a dodo, are you going to kill it? No, you no. Protect it. You don't kill a mammoth. No. I feel like you. I wasn't them. encouraging it. Just said it's. You just said you congratulate impressive. them by <laughs> taking your hat off. Uh, I just said it. <laughs> Maybe I did. Yeah, you're walking that. One. You're walking that one back. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we used to hunt mammoths. Uh, they were around for a long time, and they were bloody big. Um, a lot of them had uh, woolly coats, as we know, um, which were apparently about an inch thick. Um, and that was, uh, beneath, um, another layer of hair, which was about 20 inches long. If that makes sense. What? So they had, uh, they had a, they had a woolly undercoat and right. then like, uh, 
long, long hair, like sort of above that coat. Wow. They kind of had like layers to their fur. Yeah. Well, yeah. Interesting. I mean, a lot, that's that's present in other animals as well. Yeah. You know, you've got un, they've got undercoats and yeah. And, yeah. So the wool is you know the sort of undercoat it seems, and then they've got like long hairs um, on top of that. Um, and they had apparently uh, three. They could have three inches, um, up to three inches of fat uh, to insulate them. Which wow. is, I mean, three inches of fat is a fair amount. Um, it's quite vocal, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that was on their on their skin, by the way. It was really hard to offend them though, because they had quite thick skin. Very good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so they had they 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 had small ears for elephants. Um, but mm. then the reason that um one of the reasons that our elephants have such large I say our elephants, uh, extant elephants, elephants that haven't gone extinct yet. Yeah. Um, the reason they've got such large ears is because they tend to live in warm climates and they use their ears for thermal regulation. Um, uh. yeah. So their ears help keep them cool. But mammoths live in cold places, so they did not want their ears to keep them cool because that would kill them. So they had quite <laughs> small ears. Um, yeah. So it helped them uh, retain a heat. Um, and this is something that, here's a question, right? Mm -hmm. This is something I found really interesting when I looked it up. Um, how do you think that mammoths, how do you think mammoths are related to modern elephants? Like in, in, in what's it like, when did they sort of all branch off from each other? Are they ancestors? What, what, what's the deal going on with them? How, how does a mammoth become an elephant? Like a modern elephant? I was just thinking how long it moves elephants somewhere around? warm. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, yeah, 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 you move somewhere. Which I was I'm just trying to think how old elephants are. Well, here's the thing. So I feel like a lot of people listening will think that elephants descended from mammoths. That's that would seem logical. Yeah, yeah, it's not true. <gasps> no, they shared a they shared a common ancestor, but elephants oh. and mammoths are actually, um, they actually diverted um, from a common ancestor. It's kind of mm -hmm. like how um, chimps and humans diverted from a common ancestor, but they're not, um, yes. Yeah. We're, we're, we we're didn't not, come from, chimps. we didn't come from chimps. Yeah. yeah. So mammoths, uh, elephants didn't come from mammoths. They diverted and mammoths died off. And, um, actually, interestingly, the African elephant, uh, split off from, uh, mammoths before the Asian elephant split off from mammoths. Ah, so what that, I, I I'm fairly sure what that means is that Asian elephants are actually probably slightly more cro closely linked to mammoths mm -hmm. on sort of tree of life than they are to African elephants wow. in that the split for them happened later. Yeah. Which is really interesting. What was the common ancestor like? Was it, would we recognize it as being elephant like? Yeah. Um, had, I'm looking at right now. Um, there is one called the Gomphotherium. And that was, that came, that sort of, uh, that came after the split between sort of elephants um, sort of more modern elephants and mastodons. Um, and it, it looks like an elephant. It's got a shorter trunk um, and big bottom teeth. I don't know mm. if you guys, I mean, okay. So when I was in LA, I went to the uh, tar pits. I can't remember what they're called. The La Brea tar pits, I think. Sure. Let's go with that. Um, and That is correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. This was a year ago, by the way. Um, that's why I'm proud I remembered. So I went there and they they have this fantastic exhibit that is sort of the uh, evolution of elephants um, mm. and evolution of mammoths. And yeah, so you've got this kind of like proto elephant almost that has a shorter trunk, um, tusks and like sort of long sort of jutting out bottom teeth, mm. um, kind of like how a rat's top teeth look. And that, yeah, that then split off um, into sort of mammoths. Um, well, that split off into something and African elephants split off from that. And then down the mammoth sort of line the mammoths and asian elephants split off after mm. that um apparently it's been likened to how gorillas um gor uh, sort of the split between sort of gorillas humans chimps all sort of happened um right of one after the other it was yeah, quite a yeah, quick yeah. quick splits really if that yeah. makes sense it doesn't really matter mm. it was just an interesting <laughs> thing I, like it's just an interesting thing, thing i thought that mammoths uh elephants modern elephants aren't descended from mammoths they just have a common ancestor so did mammoths kind of exist everywhere on earth at roughly the same time? Or did they, over a long period of time, kind of like move with the climate? I think they, I'm not sure. I think they, they, they I think they moved with the climate. Mm. But also the issue is that they, they died out. So the reason that they died out is because of the climate. Mm -hmm. So they, the, because they existed for such a long time, they would mm. have traveled. They would have obviously started in one place. They would have traveled to, to lots of different places. In fact, we can see them traveling to certain islands where they yeah. became smaller and whatnot. But, um, 
the reason they died out is because of a change in climate in in all likelihood. So about 15,000 years ago, the last ice age started to end. Um, mm. Or, you know, it, it started to get warmer, essentially. Um, and so that meant that the sort of grassy areas where, the kind of grassy areas where the mammoths, um, you know, would live and had the, veg had the vegetation that they ate, they were then replaced by forests. And that ruined their habitat and their diet. And so they started to die out a bit. Some of them apparently continued to survive. And then um, humans came along and were like, ha ha. Ah. <laughs> you look tasty. Oh, mammoth, yeah. And then killed them. So apparently it, it was a mix between humans and climate that killed mammoths. Oh, great. Which is an age old story. Of, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what's going to kill most things, actually. <laughs> Except nowadays, the climate is not is caused by humans. It's just caused by people. Yeah, yeah. Like we're like we're like, oh man, we're doing both now. We're hunting them and changing the climate. Yeah, it's like I'm so <laughs> sick of like humans. We're just so sick of waiting for the climate to bring things to the brink before we, you know, knock them <laughs> off. Why don't we just make the climate, you know, why don't we make mm. the climate do it faster? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, save us uh, the effort. <laughs> <laughs> mm, nature's oven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It is like giving the world like a, a proper Dutch oven. Um, anyway, so mammoths, as we've as we've already spoken about, are fairly well preserved because they lived in cold places. And if you die in the cold and get frozen, you know, covered under sort of layers of sort of frost and whatnot, mm. you can stay frozen for a long time. There's the permafrost um, in certain places in the world, specifically the very very cold ones mm -hmm. that just remains like frozen. It just stays frozen all year yeah. round. So. That's why those mammoths are preserved because it's not like they've been sort of freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing. They just froze and stay frozen until we found them, essentially. Um, so apparently I've read that uh, some sled dogs um, were fed mammoth meat um, that had started to thaw. So it's like, you know, meat from mammoths that died a long, long time ago and wow. people would feed that to their dogs. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mad, right? I mean, this is not like a widespread thing. This is like yeah. probably in a few instances, a few instances. But it's just really interesting that like mammoths, yeah, they died out a long time ago. But because they, because they've been so well preserved, mm. we can know a lot about them and yeah. we still, you know, use them. So that's a little background on mammoths. I want to give you guys a little background on DNA before we dive properly into the story. What do you guys know about DNA? You need, you need, <laughs> you need to jog my memory on yeah. the key points. Well, what do you mean by the question? Like, we can yeah. tell you what it's made of. But that's not very helpful to talking about mammoths or relevant. It is. Um, it, 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 I mean, look, I just want you to give me a brief overview of what you know about DNA. It, okay. It's the double helix thing. It's made up of like a sequence of, what are the letters? A, C. A, G, T, C. A, yep. A, G, T, C. Uh -huh. I forgot what those are called. And it codes for proteins and those proteins yeah. um, then build uh, cells. No, muscles. One of those, they build things. Those proteins build things, and then those pro those pro those things are made made into mammoths sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> As a treat on, the, on a rare occasion. You know the clips we put out on a Monday. It, that's that <laughs> clip. That's it right there. <laughs> Someone tiny code this for me, please. That's that's going out. This is going to Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I do know, but when you ask me, I can't tell you. No, I, I, I know it was a mean question. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to see if you'd come up with something good, and to be fair, you did. Uh, yeah, so DNA, um, it's uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. It's basically the building block of us. It yeah. is the code for you. And as Luke so eloquently put it, yes, it codes um, for proteins. And the proteins actually make up uh, pretty much all your body there's proteins everywhere you know um your muscles are made of protein there's proteins um there's proteins in sort of everything i mean your hair keratin mm -hmm. is a sort of protein strand proteins are everywhere right that's what makes you you essentially yeah it helps you build your body up so that is what dna is for it's basically a code to build you it's called code to build an elephant a mammoth whatever you want to build uh if it's a living thing the world is your oyster oysters <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um <laughs> it's true so dna uh the, the great thing about dna is that it's actually quite stable um in a living cell so as soon as it's not in a living cell D dna isn't terribly stable in fact um if you if something dies its dna tends to degrade 
relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna see. Um, that's why you don't f see DNA in fossils. So if we think about Jurassic Park, do you guys remember the story of Jurassic Park? Yes, they had to get DNA from. Was it like the blood of a dinosaur that was in a mosquito that was preserved in amber? And that's where they found the DNA. Yeah. 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 Um, so <laughs> yeah, that was really <laughs> <laughs> That's where they had to get it from. So yeah, in Jurassic Park, um, the way that they bring the dinosaurs back to life is by using um, some dino DNA um, that they found, yeah, in mosquitoes and in amber. Now, we can't really do that. That's a bit, that's a little bit sci-fi. No. But, um, and they filled in the DNA with like, you know, frog DNA and whatnot. That's why the dinosaurs don't look, don't look normal. But the mm -hmm. idea behind that is that essentially you have like, you know, normal in normal fossils, the DNA does not last. The DNA is broken down, you know, it's yeah. too, it's too sort of fragile to last thousands and thousands and millions of years even. But mammoths have, you know, mammoths um, are quite old, you know? Yeah. They've been around, for, like, they have not been around for a long time. Um, and so it doesn't really make sense that we're able to get DNA of mammoths, like, you know, because DNA doesn't last very long. In fact, apparently, I found a study um, that says that DNA has a half-life of, of about 521 years. Now, what that means is that after 521 years, the sort of, um, D like, if you've got an amount of DNA at the start, mm -hmm. after 521 years, it will have sort of degraded by half. Yeah. And then 521 years later, it'll degrade by half. half again, cool. and half again, half again, half again, half again, half again. Which means that like after, you know, a few thousand years, you've got such a minimal amount of DNA that you don't really have mm -hmm. enough to work with. Yeah. But yeah, um, and DNA decays. Uh, if you don't have your basically a living cell to continue sort of repairing it and keeping it um, fixed, it will start to degrade pretty quickly. Um, and then there's specific chemicals in it that, um, there's specific parts of it that like sort of, tend to decay quite a bit more and then when it's in water it, it decays even more so and a lot of things that die end up being sort of like decayed by groundwater they get um digested by microbes and so usually we cannot find dna from very old dead things but uh these scientists have actually um done something pretty cool in that they found they found dna from a mammoth that was over a million years old Whoa. Wow. yeah how mammoth, right well, this is the thing, because it was it was frozen, um, it was frozen in the permafrost, and it was so cold that the DNA stayed relatively stable. I say relatively wow. stable. They they did not have they don't have the they didn't have like the sort of full genome mm -hmm. that was like untouched. It was all sort of fragmented, and they had to piece it together. They had to use um they had to use some elephant DNA. That, and um, it's just like Jurassic Park. Yeah, and what they knew about some <laughs> and some other mammoth DNA that they'd some sort of newer mammoth DNA yeah. that they'd sequenced um, to sort of piece it together. I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of it's, it's kind of like having pieces of a human genome. Yeah, right. Um, like all the little fragments of a human genome, and looking at a chimp to kind of be like, okay, I <laughs> guess looking at the chimp is like, okay, this one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there. You know. Um, or like, put it this way, it's like having all the, it's like chopping a human up into like different bits. You've got arm bits and leg bits and fingers and whatnot, yeah. right? And looking at a chimp and being like, okay, how do I assemble this fucking human? And you've got bits, <laughs> you've got some bits of it missing and you've got to be like, okay, like someone's taken away like the left thigh and someone's taken away like, you know, one of the eyes and some of the teeth are missing. You gotta be like, okay, where do I fill in the blanks here? You look at a chimp, you're like, okay, yeah, okay. Clearly there needs to be some teeth. That's what they were doing, but with DNA. Right, yeah. they described it um, as uh, kind of looking at the 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 box of a puzzle, you know, like a, mm. a jigsaw puzzle to try and piece it together. So yeah, um, essentially what happened here was a mammoth died, froze, and its DNA was very well preserved, but over a million years old. Before this, the oldest DNA that we'd managed to sequence, I think we might have spoken about this before, ages ago. Um, was from a horse um, from, I think, about 700, 750 million years ago. Wow. Whoa. A very well-frozen horse. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, it's a very well-preserved horse. The fact yeah. that horses were around that long ago <coughs> is amazing. I mean... Very successful species. It was probably yeah. like some kind of proto-horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I said 750,000, right? I said 750 million. For fuck's sake. <laughs> 
That is long. <laughs> I was like, nearly a billion no, years. No, the Come oldest on. before that. that. Crazy. <laughs> the oldest before horses that. Horses have been roaming the earth for nearly a billion Fucking years. Hell. I'm going to pay respect to every single horse I see. <laughs> the oldest before that was 750,000 years old. Okay, that seems but more this sensible. One million. I can't believe you guys did catch this one million year old, the over one million year old elephant now trumps that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what would trump that even more? A 750 million year old horse. <laughs> Well, keep looking. It's a billion <laughs> year old, a 1.5 billion year old elephant. Yes. No. Um, so this is a, this elephant is about 1.5 million years old. And apparently, um, so in theory, right, the, because the permafrost is about 2.6 million years old, theoretically, you could sequence DNA that is 2.6 million years old, so long as something died in that permafrost 2.6 million years ago. Ooh. Wow. And so... This was really interesting to me. So the the thing is that uh, they, like I said, um, this there were there was a mammoth that was about one point two million years old that died, and they've sort of sequenced its DNA. They've pieced it all together, um, and they've built they've built a pretty good sort of genome for this. Um, maybe not a full one. They've they've built like you know the mm. pretty good. They've put, they pieced all the DNA together, which is pretty cool um, for a really really old mammoth. And yeah, so just to give you some sort of uh, numbers and dates. The oldest DNA that we've got from humans um, in Africa is about 15,000 years old, which is pretty old, right? But obviously not, it's not a million years old. Um, <clears throat> we have DNA from a Neanderthal that lived 120,000 years ago. Wow. Um, and eh. It's not a million years though, is it? It's not a million. No. It's not a million years or a mammoth. It's not 750 <laughs> Just million. a slightly different looking person. <laughs> Big, yeah, big man. I mean, what is a mammoth if not a slightly different looking elephant? Hairy one. Yeah, it's, it's, I said it, that's even bigger though. Really big. Sometimes. Sometimes big, really big. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm a person, so it's not interesting. I'm not a mammoth, Corey. If I was a mammoth, it'd be boring. <laughs> if I was an elephant, it'd be boring. But I'm not, am I? Honestly, Luke, I think if you were a mammoth, this would be a lot more entertaining. Be a very different show, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, oh, yes, this is our friend Luke. He's a mammoth. Don't be, don't be alarmed. Uh, he's actually hundred. He's a, he's a, he's one point two million years old. Hey, he's Seven hundred fifty million years old. Rather <laughs> than like, the permafrost. It's a proper, a proper Captain America type situation over here, isn't it? Every Marvel reference you make is lost on me. That's fine. I mean, it would be because you're mm. a mammoth from one point two million years ago. We found Captain America. Trumpet. Yeah, we found Captain America in the permafrost. Um, yeah, um, and this is the thing. What's interesting, they they plotted, um, they, they basically looked at uh, the DNA of the older mammoths that they found and the DNA of elephants, and they tried to figure out how long ago the sort of paths would have diverged, and it lined up with sort of previous estimates. So, it, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of means that they were on pretty good track with mm. how well they sort of sequenced this DNA. So... The youngest mammoth that they found was about 700,000 years old. And then the second one was about 1 million years old. And then the oldest one was 1.2 million years old. Um, and the oldest one, apparently, um, is, uh, I think it's a new species that they found. They've Ooh. called it, um, or at least it's something that we've not really, uh, a new species of mammoth that we've not really seen before. Mm. They've called it Kristovka, after um, basically the place the place where it was found. Um, and they've uh they, they've essentially right find out that um the Colombian mammoths of North America which went extinct about 13,000 years ago mm. that they shared about half their genes with this new one that they've just found only half yes what that so what hang the, on hang on i share half my genes with a banana yeah that's what so I was what thinking. do you mean <laughs> they, they, look <laughs> Look, what, do you mean half of the different genes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Look. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I just needed to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I share half my genes with a banana. I'm half banana. I do. I looked that up this week. Yeah. Why I, did you look that up this week? <sighs> Doty's sister was tweeting about twins and how weird it was, and I replied saying, "You're half as similar to uh, to a banana." That was why. D don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, but that's not really. Look, how about this? We'll tackle the half the half the genes, banana genes, another <laughs> another day. Everyone put a pin in that. Don't don't go telling anyone about it. Don't go talking about it. Just either Google it now 
or put mm. a pin in it. It's only okay. because we found a 1.2 million old banana in the permafrost, but we didn't have all the, the DNA. There's bits missing, so we had to take bits of Luke. Ta- from people. Yeah. <laughs> we took bits of Luke and then put it in the banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not everyone shares half their genes with the banana. It's just, just Luke. Just Luke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bananas went extinct and they, they re-spliced the DNA of bananas from me and what was left of a 1.2 million year old banana. And that's where the modern banana comes from. You're welcome. A species of ban- banana did go extinct. Yeah, the one oh, that really? tastes like sweets. No, no, don't say I mean, yes, but like, don't say it like that. That's... Tastes like sweets, Corey. No, no, simplification. no, that's... <laughs> that's not the one that sweets taste like the banana flavor that's what i said the one that tastes like sweets no no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> you know what you've said explain it to the good people explain it properly <laughs> so okay so um there's this banana um that tastes really like those banana sweets you have <laughs> Um, so wait, can I just pause you for a sec? And, yeah. And you've made it sound as though there's a singular banana that tastes like these. There is, and it's gone extinct. It's really yeah. sad. Someone just, ate it. Just the one. Just the one. <laughs> just the one. There is one banana that tastes like that. You've got to find it. Okay. There's a there's a there's a strain of banana uh, which was the banana that the that the sweet banana was based upon, um, and that banana has gone extinct. Now I've actually have actually heard that it does still exist some places, but that it's really, um, basically really susceptible to banana diseases. Um, and so, so it's not very widespread. And, but you can, apparently it does still exist somewhere. Really? That's fantastic. Yeah. The, reason that, the reason that it um, it went extinct, or almost went extinct, is because uh, bananas are basically all clones, but they're not, mm. they, there's no seeds. They don't, they don't reproduce sexually. Mm. They just clone themselves. So yeah. bananas are all clones of each other, which means that they're genetic, genetically very, very similar, which means that if there's a disease that comes about, there's no genetic variation. That means that some bananas might be able to uh, survive it better than others, which means that if you got... All the bananas a, get it equally bad. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty but much. But if you go to your local sweet shop and you get one of those bananas and then you plant it, then it comes back. <laughs> banana sweets, sorry, not bananas. Banana sweets. <laughs> It's called the Fusarium oxysporum, apparently. Wait, no, it's not. No, that's the thing that kills it. Don't. No. No. Oh, God. Oh, Don't God. Eat that. Don't eat that. Oh, no. I'm just enjoying watching this train wreck from, from where I'm sitting. <laughs> Fantastic. Um... Please it's don't called a gross banana. Michael banana, sorry. It's called a gross Michael banana. That doesn't sound Ew, very appetizing. Gross. Ugh. Michael. Ugh. Oh my god, George Michael. Do you think that's why George Michael from um, Arrested Development is... No. Did he eat it? George Michael. He must have eaten it. Yeah. No, what? The, the one banana. George it's Michael. Michael Sarah. He's like... Look, this doesn't matter. Oh. This is completely unrelated. Shall we start talking about mammoths again? No. Mm. Okay, I fine. I kind of like bananas. No. Okay, fine. No, so on. more about banana. No. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the mammoth. Um, yeah, so this these uh, these Colombian mammoths are very similar to this new sort of species of mammoth that they've discovered. Mm. Um, and also very similar to woolly mammoths. And so that means that basically what researchers think happened is that this new species of mammoth um, basically went to North America um, met a bunch of woolly mammoths. Uh, you got a got a little bit busy with a bunch of woolly mammoths, and they they basically kind of turned into a new third sort of offshoot species of the two. Ah, oh. yeah, wow, it's very cool, right? Very cool, sexy mammoths. <laughs> Suppose supposedly, um, and so that means that there's uh that means that there's a sort of distinct subspecies of mammoth for that specific place, mm. which is very cool. Um, and so, I mean that's. Almost it. That's almost it for the story. But there is something else I want to talk about. Okay. I know what it is. What is it? It's the, is it the story that I read many years ago that said, within a couple of years, we're going to have clones of woolly mammoths and that didn't happen and I'm angry. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure they said within two years, like (laughs) four years ago. Well, maybe, maybe three years ago. No, hold on. It was 2000, so in 2000, I mean, actually, they probably did say that about four years ago. Um, we've had some breakthroughs on it. For some reason, people are trying to bring back woolly mammoths. I mm-hmm. think it's silly. Um, well, no, I don't think it's necessarily silly. Some of the reasons that they're doing it, um, before we get into the sort of how and, and whatnot, yeah. is some of the reasons that they're doing it is some people have said that it 
can help us sort of understand how some species are going extinct and how to protect them from going extinct. But I think that's silly, right? Because here's the thing. Species are going to go extinct. We yeah. should we should take our hands off the wheel a little bit and just <laughs> let some things go extinct. Obviously, in the case of climate change and poaching, stop poaching them. But if it's like a panda and a panda just doesn't want to have sex or, you know, eat meat like it should, let them die. Just let but them they're die. cute. I don't care. They're dumb and frustrating. I mean, that to me, what, what you said there about... Um, you know, this will help us discover how species goes. That sounds like a funding application. Yeah. That is just <laughs> making stuff up because they want to clone a mammoth. And I fully, <laughs> fully agree. Fully agree with that. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, if it was, if it's in industry, I think the easy, I think the reason that you say for cloning a mammoth is you can open a mammoth park. You you will, you can open a, you can oh, open a bloody zoo that's just mammoths. Just to put them in cages. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't put them in cages, man. It'd be a big bloody safari mammoth safari is even so that's just a very big cage cory they're <laughs> mammoth can, bro. Like, can they go wherever they want no, that's, no. no i suppose yeah so is it even cold enough cage. for them anyway make a big cold room well, it will be fridge. cold enough for them it will be cold enough for them soon it's called a fridge yeah but also the issue with like this is the, this is something they they kind of touched on in jurassic park jurassic park the, the dinosaurs they made them grow extra fast which yes ridiculous but whatever um if you were to have a mammoth, just think about how long it would take for a mammoth to get to full size. It takes us like 18 years mm. or more to get to our full size. Yeah. Imagine how long it would take for a bloody mammoth to get to full size. How long do they live? Or how long are they meant to live for? I actually don't know. I genuinely, yeah. I actually don't know how long mammoths live. I mean, I, I mean, the thing is, it'd probably be hard to say how long they live given that they've been dead for thousands. Yeah, true. They've been dead for thousands. <laughs> well, they don't really live for very long, well, though, I, do they? Yeah, you could probably make a guess based on how long elephants live. Um, which I don't know. I don't know what I think how long that is. I About think elephants live years, um, compared length to humans, actually. Yeah. Yeah? So we check how long elephants live. 70, 60 to 70 years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be great, because then an elephant could be born mm. at the same time as you, and they could be your friend <gasps> for your whole life. Wow, imagine imagine um that that TV show and that book where you have like a, a daemon, um, but your daemon is a Matt, mammoth. Matt Damon. <laughs> no, not Matt Damon. Your daemon is Matt Damon. Luke, no, um Luke's talking, Luke's talking about the his dark compass. materials, the oh, yeah, golden compass. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, the demons and, and whatnot. You, everywhere you go, you just gotta take this bloody four four meter tall elephant with you. <laughs> I mean and you have to trim its hair and stuff. No, because it gets too long it and it just matted. carries you places though. That's true, but really slowly. You can walk faster, surely. I mean, I don't, I don't know how fast a mammoth moves. Being perfectly honest, so I wouldn't. Well, we haven't seen him. <laughs> we don't know. Oh, well, we might. That might be changing the future. Yeah. So, um, the idea is that. Oh my god, an elephant can go forty kilometers an hour. Okay, I take it all back. That is insane. <laughs> I should <laughs> point this out. An elephant go forty kilometers an hour. When a if a bull elephant charges at you, um, uh, just say your prayers. You're done, bro. Um, elephants. <laughs> Like elephants, we think of elephants as being fun and nice and stuff, and they can be very fun and nice, but um, an elephant in a bad mood, you're dead. Mm, they're true. big and they're sharp and they're stampy. Heavy. <laughs> Bulky. This is something I, should, I was going to point out, is that we think of big things as being quite slow. Makes sense. But bear in mind that something big moving quite quick will look slower by virtue of the fact that it is very large, <laughs> right? Like a mouse, you can outrun a mouse, but a mouse in like relation to its size mm. moves very, very quickly. But you can still outrun a mouse. Yes. You know what I mean? I mean, I assume I have no idea how fast mice run. I'm pretty quick. Look it up. <laughs> Go for it. 40 kilometers Google, an hour. All my Google search history is just going to be uh, top speed of different animals. A uh, mouse top speed is eight miles per hour. <laughs> I'd be that. quite tough for you to uh, outrun, I reckon. No. no. I could beat that. Surely. Human top speed. 45 kilometers an hour. Okay. Wow. I'm taking a lot back today. I take it back. <laughs> 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 so, speaking of mice and mammoths, you didn't think I'd be able to tie them in, would you? Uh, but I can actually tie them in because we recently um, actually got to put, we put some mammoth DNA into mice cells. Sounds silly, but let me explain a little bit more. That is one cruel pregnancy. Did it make the mice four meters tall? <laughs> 
That no. would be incredible. No, it just it made them made the cells dead. No. no oh. Um. So what we did is essentially we put mammoth DNA into um the sort of um embryo cells of mice mice embryos um and the idea is obviously like if you could put the mammoth dna into the mouse embryo then it could feasibly sort of grow into a living thing that is kind of like a mammoth essentially mm. obviously it, it, it didn't like this is this is uh this was in japan i believe um the idea is they're trying to clone woolly mammoths yeah uh but it didn't quite work so the i mean the cells um it, it, there were sort of um how do we put, how do we put it uh there were some things that need to happen before cells divide yeah and that stuff happened in some of the cells but they didn't actually start um dividing properly for uh, a number of reasons i think one of the primary ones being the fact that the dna um it, it, it wasn't sort of working properly inside the cell simplify it basically it, mm. the cell wasn't treating the dna the way that it should be treated um so this oh, so yeah no it's DNA. the same and so it, it couldn't uh they couldn't divide properly so it couldn't you actually grow into a full mammoth it was just kind of mammoth dna existing quite well inside of a mouse mm. embryo but it is it was a pretty big breakthrough at the time in 2019 um and it is a pretty major step towards cloning mammoths and this sort of old old mammoth dna means that you know one it means that there could be more animals whose DNA we could find and um, sequence pretty reliably. And two, um, it means that if we're going to clone a mammoth, we could clone a really, really old mammoth. And I do think, apparently, um, I've, I've read different estimates between like 10 and 30 years, we could be actually cloning mammoths. Again, not sure why. If we've seen Jurassic sense. Park, yeah. um, if we've seen Jurassic Park, then we should understand that uh, it's a bloody bad idea. Don't go cloning things that are extinct. The lesson of every single Jurassic Park film is don't do this. Yeah. And they just keep doing it. Oh, but I do it. Six films later. You, oh, you know I'd do it. <laughs> oh, I would do it. I'd do it over no, and over. That, that doesn't apply to me. No, it Surely doesn't apply not. to me and my dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that is the story of um, woolly mammoths and the oldest DNA that we currently know about. Very cool. Very, co uh, very cool, isn't it? I guess the the thing is that though is that if they've managed to successfully clone, especially the one point two million year old one, then <laughs> then they kind of know they can probably clone anything at least less old than that. Like it's a really good test case for like the limits of our ability to reconstruct DNA from fragments. Mm. It's like that's that's some of the oldest DNA we're going to find. So like it's better than like trying to bring back a dodo, which we maybe have much better samples of DNA for. Yeah. If we can bring back a mammoth, we can probably bring back anything within the last million years, as long as we've got we, something frozen. I don't know if we do have better samples for dodo DNA. Oh. Because why would Because they we? weren't frozen. Yeah. yeah, if you think about it, the reason... So it, the, the issue of the the issue with the DNA is not the age. It's in fact just how um, well preserved it is. So mm, yeah. something could go extinct like, you know... Well, I mean, something could have gone extinct like, you know, a, f a few thousand years ago. And if it's if its dna isn't well preserved then we're kind of kind of we, we've got no luck yeah it's mm. it, it's this is kind of a a, a measure of it, it's not about how old something yeah it's, as i said it's not about how old something is it's about how well preserved it is so what this is kind of showing is that if something is sufficiently well preserved we can really just kind of sequence its dna so long as you know we've got maybe some kind of blueprint to work from some kind of and um some kind of descendant or cousin or or whatnot that mm. we can use as a sort of um blueprint or picture on the puzzle box but yeah that is this week's episode how about we start going to the end with a quick fire <laughs> quiz <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. mammoth edition <laughs> <laughs> so for this big mammoth sized quick fire quiz i'm gonna ask you guys one question between the two of you i have to finish ask the question before you can answer you gotta buzz in before you can answer the first person to buzz in and answer the question correctly wins mm -hmm everything in this episode and i'm gonna ask you now look what is your buzzer oh for god's sake that was gonna be mine very good Jam, what I'm is the your buzzer? on this podcast get away i've got to think of a new buzzer now that was that exact thing was gonna be mine just make a banana noise because you know looks a banana as well <laughs> <laughs> that's very that's very fantastic quiet. asmr <laughs> okay so my question for you guys is roughly what is the estimated half-life of DNA? 
Oh, I think with the delay, Luke might have got yeah, there. Yeah, just, just got in. About 50 years. No. Incorrect, Luke, I'm afraid. Jam, can you come in with a steal? It's in the 500s. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say oh. 512. You're not close enough. It's 521. You got the digits uh, mixed around. I, uh, I got a mixed round. But if we're, playing the, if we're playing the prices right, I think Jamp won that one. So well done, Jamp. You got this question right for this week. And that's that's it. I don't really know what else to say other than good job. Well good done. job, man. I've only got eight weeks of losses left. We're good. It's <laughs> <laughs> a reference to last week. <laughs> the curse. So that, <laughs> that is it for this week's episode. But before we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producer Ashley Muller. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description and subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys, or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or SciGuys at TikTok2. SciGuys at TikTok2. I am not Corey everywhere. I'm Champkin everywhere. I'm Luke Cuffworth everywhere. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.